Okay, okay, we are ready to start our next panel here up on the main stage at ESI London. We start making your way over and take a seat. Our next part is called Authentic Marketing, Navigating the Role of the Creator. So can we please get a big ESI welcome for our moderator for this panel, which is Imogen Wood, who's the co-founder of Socially. Please welcome up to the stage. Please take a seat there underneath your portrait. Next up, we have Liam Whitehead, who's Sales and Partnership Manager from Method. Hello there. Grab yourself a seat on our very, very comfy chairs. These are good, aren't they? They're very nice. We've been spinning on these in the breaks. Next up, we have Nicola Clark, who is Account Director of Gaming at Twitch. Welcome along. Please grab yourself a chair, my friend. A familiar face. Sneaking across from the hosting duties and going back to their Twitch side of their job, we have Frankie Ward. There we go. Grab yourself a nice chair. I know you've been spinning in these earlier. Available on TikTok right now, Frankie spinning in chairs. And last but not least, we have Liam Whitehead, who is Sales and Partnership Manager from... Oh, I've gone the wrong way. I've gone the wrong way. They're written the opposite way around on my piece of paper. My apologies. It is Jesse Adler for Creator Partnerships from Patreon. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our panel, Authentic Marketing, Navigating the Role of the Creator. It is great to have you all here today, and I am very much looking forward to introducing you to our brilliant panel. Um, I am Imogen, as uh, was said, I'm the co-founder of Socially, an agency that helps companies within the gaming and tech spaces to build community and community initiatives. So I think we can all agree that community lies right at the heart of esports and games marketing. As a creator, you are working to grow your community. And brands and publishers are always looking to access these communities in order to grow their own. So how do we navigate this delicate process and make sure that we are showing up authentically throughout it? Now, I have four experts here with me today to talk about their different experiences managing brand and creative partnerships. So Jessa, uh, Nicola, Liam and Frankie, uh, it would be great if you could each introduce yourselves and give us a bit of background about what it is that you do. Uh, Liam, take us away. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm Liam, Sales and Partnerships Manager for, for Method. So we're more of a, an esports team with a creator focus. We've been around for 18 years. And the best way of explaining it is that we're very much focused on World of Warcraft. But although we run big World of Warcraft events, Every single player of Method is a creator on Twitch. Every single Twitch streamer is trying to grow their own community. And together with Method as a team, we try and tie in as much brand partnerships and sponsorships into their stream as uh, possible. Amazing. Thank you. Nicola? My turn. Um, so I'm Nicola Clark. Uh, I've worked at Twitch for about five years now. I'm an account director and I basically, essentially, I work with brands to try and I suppose match make brands with gaming experiences uh, on Twitch, and that includes with influencers, with streamers. So the education piece is the important one for me. I am Frankie Ward. I am one of the hosts here at ESI because I'm an esports host. So I work in all the games. Uh, I joke that I'm not fussy, but I genuinely do care about all the games that I work on. I'm also a Twitch partner. So I've been a Twitch partner since 2017. And uh, I've been part of the Intel Gaming Alliance, which was originally an Intel UK only initiative that's gone international since summer 2019. And that's alongside Tommy Boxwell of Two Angry Gamers, who was meant to be here today. And I'm afraid you've got uh, his co Intel Alliance member instead in me. But I also do brand partnerships with normally uh, hardware partners um, of sort of short and long term. But uh, Intel, I've been with for about four and a half years. Hi, I'm Jesse. I uh, work at Patreon and Creator Partnerships. So Patreon is a membership and community platform really geared at letting creators and organizations really own their direct-to-fan business. Uh, specifically, I work with a whole range of creators from the gaming space to podcasting all around uh, and organizations to help them figure out if membership, subscriptions uh, is a strategy that might work for them, how they can launch on Patreon, how they can grow, 
uh, and talk to their audience about it and really make the most use of that direct to fan relationship. So. Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. And such a different experience. But we were all joking backstage that actually we've worked on so many projects together and we didn't even realize it. So uh, a huge array of experience here. But first things first, I'd love to start by drilling down into the title of the panel a little bit. Um, and from your perspective, what does authentic marketing mean in the context of creators, brands and community and why do you think it's so important uh liam let's start with you again yeah so so with method there's sort of two sides to it a lot of the creators we've had haven't really done that many brand partnerships so obviously i'm explaining to them the value and what they can get from it for growing but for us it's relevancy how relevant it is to the mmorpg community as that is our focus and two realistically what some people do forget is how much they want to do it, you know, how, how much, you know, if it is a different game to what they play, does it interest them? Is it something they want to do? Will their community support them in that endeavor? And if it's a brand, how can we integrate that with their stream to, to improve it and ultimately build that trust? And trust is what Method focus on at the moment as our core belief. Yeah, amazing. What's your take on it, Nicola? Well, I think you're probably going to get everyone saying exactly the same thing as Liam. Um, and, you know, Liam's quite right there. It's exactly it. It's all about, uh, from my perspective, um, brands not dominating the message, especially when it comes to, to creators, not having them say, you must say this line in this exact way, and instead allowing influencers to actually be the king or queen of their own community and to allow that authenticity to come through, to not over script. It's such a difficult balance to, to have, but yeah, you're quite right. It's all about marrying up the right brands with the right people in the end of the day. Definitely. As someone on the, I guess, the creative side of partnerships, for me, when I do get inquiries, I would always be upfront and honest if I don't think it's the right partnership because otherwise that's going to impact my community negatively and it's also going to impact the client negatively. Totally. And yeah. so it's really important to be selective. And so one of the things with the partnerships that I do, they are integrated into my life. So it, being sponsored by Intel, for example, um, I have to do a sponsor stream for them every month and then there's some separate video deliverables that we do and I maybe go to some events. But at the same time, every single time I stream, I am streaming on an Intel CPU. I've been associated obviously with Intel uh, projects within the esports space like Intel Extreme Masters. So it's when I do a brand partnership, it is because it's something that genuinely makes my life better. Uh, I did a campaign with Samsung. Um, in fact, I did two campaigns around their tablet. When I do an esports show, I have that tablet on screen with me almost 100% of the time because it has all my notes in from the past two years. So for me, when I'm trying to look for it, it's always important to be authentic because I'm looking for a partnership that's obviously it's going to compensate me financially, but it is actually going to help my life be better because ultimately that's the point of the campaign. Yeah. It's quite interesting because for Patreon, when we're working with a creator, like we talk about ourselves as a creator led brand. And whenever uh, somebody is pushing or trying to get members to sign up for the Patreon is our version of like a brand deal, the creator themselves are that brand, right? But I think many of the rules still apply, uh, which is, you know, being authentic, uh, being authentic to me there means like having a strong why and always thinking about the why. I think, uh, you know, Nicola made a great point, which is like not to be overly prescriptive in how they talk about your platform, but letting like themselves shine through and be organic when talking to their audience because if the creator is not excited about what they're talking about like the audience certainly isn't going to be and it's kind of hard to fake not that they should ever do that but it is difficult to fake true excitement about something so like being genuinely excited in how you're talking about it developing that messaging yourselves with like some amount of guidance i think really leads to a lot of authenticity uh, and then the other piece is like it should always be sort of a reflection of the actual content the person makes, not something like completely left field or completely different from what they would actually do, but it should be like in the vein of how they organically create, I think. 
Yeah, that's amazing. And I think it's so telling that despite our different backgrounds, everyone's given such a similar answer as well. Um, Frankie, you touched on some really exciting brand partnerships that you've been a creator for. Um, but I'd love to hear from everybody else um, if there's any real world examples of, uh, you know, campaigns that you've been involved with, activations that you're particularly proud of, and why you think that they were so successful. Yeah. Um Mine's probably the most boring answer, really. For anyone who knows Method, it, it will always be the Race to World First, but the Race to World First is not an esports event that has some sponsorship attached. It's advertising every single stream on our roster. It's combining all the sponsorship revenue that gets generated, all the Twitch revenue that gets generated. Everything essentially goes into one big pool and then gets divvied out amongst all of the streamers after the event. And the streamers who are bigger, who have bigger audiences, they get less of the share. So some of the smaller streamers who don't really get much in their you know, own channel viewership, they get rewarded for being part of the race and being part of Method's journey. But likewise, because everyone's involved in the race, everyone gets the benefits of all of our partners. So Kingston, the prime example, they give a Method a lot of value in kind to help with their products. You know, we've kitted out everyone's PC so everyone can stream really effectively. Even people who aren't streaming, who maybe want to get into it, we full on kitted out their PCs, got them set up, got them ready, and we're like, hey, we want you to build on your community. We want you to stream. You're already involved in the race. Let's tie in all of our partners and try and, you know, help you build it. Yeah, that's amazing. And guys, make sure you don't miss the race to World First on November 14th. Shameless plug there for Liam. Thank you. <laughs> Nicola, what about you? Yeah. I feel like we're just all we're gonna go like this. <laughs> yeah. Um for me, oh, this is such a hard one. Um and I should have probably prepared something to say right now, but um for me it's always about the more left field clients that I work with. So, you know, I can work with publishers, I can work with endemics or, you know, uh, hardware, for example, which makes so much sense in esports and, and in gaming. But um, one of my favorite clients of all time, I just had a meeting about this very thing, was the UK government. Um, oh, wow. oh yeah. <laughs> um, And I love that kind of thing because it's all about realizing that gamers are more than one thing you know like we're we're all playing games we're all having a great time but actually you know we're interested in politics or we're interested in what we're wearing or cars or whatever financial services i love working with banks you know that kind of thing whereby we are bringing in people who are um shy about gaming or don't quite know what to do and we can help them with that um, for me, that's the most exciting thing that, that I can be doing. Um, I love that. I love yeah, that. gamers are people too. Right? <laughs> gamers have feelings. Uh, Jesse, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, the one that comes to mind uh, is our team worked with a Twitch streamer from the US named Disguise Toast, who I'm not sure if anybody is familiar with, but he has uh, a Patreon page that he rolled out for his esports organization, Disguise. So if anybody's familiar with the story there, he started an esports team about a year and a half, two years ago, and was very vocal online about the difficulties of running an esports organization. I think the video was like, I lost a million dollars or something like that. Uh, and, you know, just like made this content very open with the audience and really has this connection. And I think, you know, that lent itself so well to something like membership on Patreon because, like, many of the struggles I think that he was running into running an esports business was that he had so much fan support and community, but the economics for him still didn't really make sense, maybe because of how it's traditionally monetized for him, whether that's through direct brand integrations or purses or something like that. But he had this huge community that like really wanted to both learn more about the work he was doing and like be able to support the mission. So his Patreon was around like, come with me and get like founder talks essentially about the process of building an esports organization, the struggles I'm running into every day. And it's like that sort of peek behind the scenes that I think is so important to people. Like I'll, I'll often talk about Patreon, like your living room, whereas maybe these other channels are your front door and people are really there for the more like intimate messaging and kind of like real experience of what you're going through. And I think what I said earlier about having a strong why, like that's one of the strongest whys I've ever seen in launching a membership, you know, uh, so came off as really authentic. And I think the results really showed in how his community showed up for him. So, yeah, definitely. And I think it's so interesting, your point around 
creating a membership, launching a membership, it allows you in some ways to be more authentic because you don't have to, you know, talk with brands and deal with brands who maybe don't understand your point of view or what you're trying to create in this world. So, yeah, that's incredible. Um, Frankie, I think it's really interesting that we have your perspective on this panel as a, a creator. So I'd love to know any challenges that you've run into working with brands. <laughs> oh, um, so one of the biggest challenges in general is not being briefed properly. You would be surprised at how often this happens. Sometimes you'll work with an agency as a middleman and they will be uh, a creative agency and they won't do anything creative. They will literally come sort of message you and be like, so where's the campaign? And you'll say, well, what is the campaign? What are your KPIs? What is the actual purpose? What's, what is the project that we're trying to promote? Who are you trying to reach? And they won't tell you. They'll just expect you to suddenly be like, oh yeah, so I'm gonna do a video about this project you have. Like, because they haven't even told you the product. So that's one of the things. Um, that's, again, I will sing the praises of Intel forever because we have a, a campaign manager called Chris Humphreys who literally, every time we do an uh, Intel stream or anything for them, he will do a brief you know, dates, times, etc. game codes if we're doing giveaways, game codes for ourselves if we need to install a game, why we're playing this game, how have Intel actually fed into it, what the technology that we're prioritizing to talk about within the stream. Like, everything is there on a plate for us. You can literally look at it during the stream if you can't remember everything you need to hear. It's just there and there's a group of us. And we also feel like we get to do feedback. There's one campaign I did where uh, they... It was meant to be a sponsorship. And then what happened was they would give me the equipment and then they say, so we need it back in a week. And I was like, hang on a second. No, no, you're missing the value out of the campaign because when I stream, people ask what I'm streaming on. I have a Moobot command that people use constantly when I'm streaming to find out what I'm playing on. So if I am not streaming on your equipment, but I have an exclusivity deal as you as my hardware partner for my, my desktop, well, I'm not going to lie to my community, so I'm technically not meeting my terms of the contract, but then you're not meeting yours because you're literally not giving me the hardware and this is not a sponsorship. Um, so yeah, having emails not replied to because I'm pitching ideas for the campaign because I'm so keen to keep things moving, all sorts of things like that. But for me, the biggest takeaway I would love everyone to keep in mind if they're thinking of working with creators or they're in the process is brief, brief, brief. Because we want to fall in love with your products. That's why we've signed up to it. But we can't if we don't know who they are. You know, it's like, I wouldn't go on a Tinder date with someone if there was no picture or description in their bio, right? So why, why would I That'd be fun. work with your product? That's strange. I, I, think, I think Frankie's point about, um, about briefing, that's so, that's, well, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I think there's a lot of um, brands that, don't quite know how to talk to, to content creators and they don't quite understand what the value is. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, an education piece that we have, uh, that I have, that I do, which is all around trying to sort of, uh, like I said before, match make or, or try and figure out how they can do that. But, um, but you know, from speaking to, to influencers myself, that seems to be such a huge issue across the entire industry. Um, whereby uh, influencers are almost like commodified or you're just like one and the same <laughs> and please produce one times video by this date and you're missing a trick you're missing that magic sauce which is that every one of them is different every community is unique and bespoke and if you're not getting into the weeds of that you're missing out I once yeah. had a, a video I had to make as part of a sponsorship and it was for, uh, it turned out to be for their press conference that uh, revealing the product and I didn't know because they didn't talk to me about that when we signed the contract. And they were like, so yeah, we, they sent me a really shiny video and I was like, I can't deliver that. It's just me and a camera and I'm six months pregnant. That's not, like the machine is so huge, I can't physically carry up the stairs. I can't do this for you in three days. So eventually we had a back and forth where I was like, if you send me someone then to help me film it, we'll create something really nice that's fit for your brand at this big press conference. And they kept going back and forth and saying, but what if we spent the money on sending you a second camera? And I was like, no, that's, that's not going to solve the problem. If you want this to hit this, then we can do that for you. But I, I can't give what you're asking for because you didn't, we didn't manage expectations before this contract was signed. 
Um, and so it was very difficult being doing a relationship with someone who didn't care about me as a creator. They wanted someone to make marketing videos for them. They didn't want me. And that was an issue. Yeah, we got a lot of knowing smiles from you, Lee. And <laughs> what's your take on I mean, this? I definitely think there's a complete flip side to that as well is because I work with a lot of streamers who don't really do many campaigns, I get sent a brief and then their streamer brief is like 15 pages of A4 text. And they come back to me and they go, give me the TLDR, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> the, the amount I have to read to get through it to figure out that the campaign isn't as complex as what they're, they're aiming it to be for people, but they've put in so much wording and how you have to do X amount of the campaign. But if, if you're making it so regimented within that four hour period, then people aren't going to watch because it isn't going to be quality content. Yeah. It's just going to be reading off a script. That, that's the trust piece, isn't it? That's where you have to trust that the creator or the influencer, or whatever you want to call them, is able to actually deliver. And if you don't trust them, I don't understand why you want to work. I don't, I don't know. It's so well, funny. You, re you read in the small text somewhere, it talks about how they can use your media rights for like seven months. And you're like, uh, excuse me, why is this in the brief <laughs> really at the end? Yeah, no, all very important points. I think not uh, expecting your creators to be mind readers is, is a very, very important thing. And so, Jesse, um, how do you support uh, creators through facilitating partnerships? Uh, what do you think from a Patreon point of view? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Patreon's really about just like empowering the creator to find their own voice or do what works best for them. We're really more here to like provide the tools in the space to learn about what serves them best and sort of like craft a product and ecosystem that sort of fits that. So that can mean anything from like a lot of the roadmap for Patreon's products, whether that's like we've just released a bunch of new features like join for free or a native chat thing. These are all the results of like directly incorporating creator feedback into our product roadmap. Um, so that's one piece of it. I think the other way that we support really is just like showing examples of what other people have done in the past and sort of helping guide them through it. We're never going to give somebody briefs on like the things that you have to do, more on the things that we know work and like how you can be best using the products essentially to like make the best use of the opportunity. I think it's a new experience for a lot of creators for themselves to be the brand that they're talking about, right? Which lends like itself to a lot of like confusion on how to prioritize it or even like where to put it in the stack of things because truly like everybody's priorities are different when it comes to Patreon or really anything, right? So it's like this couldn't be somebody who's trying to go full time maybe and they're using Patreon as the avenue for that. Or maybe they just really want to get a better sense of their community and who they are. Or maybe it's like I need to just be monetizing more effectively. There's different ways to use the product for like each of those things. So it's about sort of guiding creators through where their goals meet like reality and how they can be using it essentially. Yeah, definitely. And I think personal branding has become such an important thing within esports, within gaming, especially for creators. You know, it's not just brands talking to creators, it's brands talking to other brands at this point. And I think we need to have an appreciation for the fact that creators are very understandably precious and uh, protective over their brands and the authenticity that they have. So just a quick last question. Um, I know we've already talked about um, making sure that you give a, a thorough and you know comprehensive brief, but if you had one other piece of advice to give to a brand who's looking to work with creators in the gaming industry, what would you give them? <laughs> I'll go again, yeah. I mean, at least for me, Maybe it's more of a brutal way, but I like to sit down with them and know what they want from it first. Which, I mean, it seems easy on the face of it, but the amount of brands I speak to and I, I even go and visit their office and speak to them, they, they don't really know what they want. They don't really know what they want, even though they're investing quite a lot of money into it. And you say, is it pure sales? Because that makes the campaign so different. If all you're looking for is people to buy your product instantly. Also, it's not as simple as that, right? But sometimes that's what they want. Sometimes it's brand awareness. But for me, it's... Yeah, knowing what you want before you approach an agency or before you approach people or yeah, get that advice on knowing exactly what it is you're trying to achieve. Yeah, um, for me, I mean, Imogen, what you just said there about brands talking to brands, that's so good. I'm going to use that. Um, <laughs> that's, I'm Credit writing that me. one down. But uh, there's so many bits of advice. I think first and foremost, it would be, it's good to own up to what you don't know. 
Um, and brands sometimes aren't quite sure what they do and don't know, especially with things like gaming. Gaming is so nuanced, there's so many ways in. And I quite often have people saying, uh, Nicola, I want to do something in esports. And it turns out they want to do something with Animal Crossing. Or, you know, you know, in the end, whenever we dig down into it, um, there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of people thinking they can kind of get away with gaming, but uh, um, so I think kind of just be honest and, and assess what you do and don't know. Trust the creators. Trust that uh, you're in good hands. If you've done the due diligence, if you've got the right people on board, let let it happen. There are always safeguards. There's always guardrails. There's always things. We're always you know keeping your best interests in heart. But if you try and fix everything right down, it's not going to be magic. It's all, all yeah. about the magic, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about that spontaneity. It's all about the fun of it. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's tons I could, I could say I there. Mean, but gaming communities are such discerning communities. They're yeah, very that's critical. That's a nice way to put it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you don't want to just charge in there blindly and, and think that you know everything. Because if you start calling Animal Crossing esports, then you're very quickly going to lose it's credibility. Difficult. I mean, you could probably do something with it. I don't, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they could esport it. Yeah, but I'd play Animal Crossing esports. I could envision definitely. a Little, yeah, okay. Frankie, how about turnip, you? Turn up <laughs> throwing, I don't know. I think I, everything has, that's important, I think, has been said. So, trying to think, and I guess one of the things is communicating to your creators what success looks like for the brand. Because we are in quite a stressful situation, uh, I would say, for, for people who do put content online and, and, you know, that's part of their business because algorithms are constantly changing and social media platforms are not communicating why and, and how and what they're doing. And obviously we're post pandemic now, so Twitch numbers are potentially different as well. So for me, it sometimes it's quite stressful, especially being on the artist formerly known as Twitter, because the way that they're promoting things is not the same anymore. And Luckily, I've had conversations with other creators and they're finding this and also a fantastic panel early today where Sebastian Carmichael Brown in particular was talking about this. When you hashtag something ad, you don't get the engagement that you're expecting to. But also, it's really stressful being on X right now. It's not actually a very nice place to be. I am forcing myself to do it because it's part of my job, but I don't, I, I don't get the joy that I used to anymore. Where are the animal videos? Where are people falling over and then being okay, but at the same time, we all got to laugh at their expense. That's not there anymore. It's, it's a hard place to be. Um, so having an idea of what the brand wants from you that's not just pure numbers, but actually what you mean to them. So again, I keep mentioning it, but when, with Intel, I know what I represent to them and I know it's, it's more than just numbers. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be working together because I had a baby and so my numbers weren't as good on stream and now they're building up again. So um, having that reassurance within a partnership both, both ways is so valuable for kind of continuing the positivity when sometimes things don't feel too positive. I also miss the animal videos. For the, for the record. Uh, I think the thing that I would say to most brands is like be less transactional and more build a partnership with a creator if you want actual results. I think like the thing that I've noticed are the most successful brand integrations or Patreon memberships for that matter, which is sort of like pushing a brand, is like consistency over time and a through line to the story of how you're working with this brand is always going to overperform. Single mentions might cause like a spike of traffic or something but it's not gonna cause the KPIs or the like objectives that you actually want of like people meaningfully engaging with your product, whatever that product is. When you mention it like a third or fourth time or it's organically integrated into your content in such a way where it just seems like part of the experience, right? That's when you get the results that you actually want. Um, and like people can t sense that. Like if you just mention a thing once and it's very obviously like hashtag ad, like people get it. They're like, okay, cool. You're in it for a payday. Whereas if you've, sort of done it over time and built a relationship, it's like, oh, this person might actually care about the thing they're talking about. Maybe I should actually go check it out. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you guys for all your incredible insights on those questions. Um, I have no idea how we're doing for time, but no one is waving at me madly yet. So, um, oh, there's the mad wave. Perfect timing. Um, so now I'm going to open up to you guys. If you have any questions for our panel, um, feel free to put your hand up and we'll run a mic over to you. Um, yes, right down here. Hello. Um, oh, it's really weird hearing my voice. 
Um, I wondered if you guys had any advice for, um, basically I'm a talent manager, so I'm kind of often in between the creators and the brands. Um, and I think if, if you guys have any advice on how to convince a brand to be more authentic and not put words in their mouth, that would be really helpful. Well, uh, let's just, I'll chat to you after. <laughs> there are so, oh, essentially, you need to be the expert in the room. You need to come across as confident because brands are afraid. Brands are afraid of lots of things. Uh, when it comes to Twitch, brands uh, get a little bit shaky about being live. Uh, when it comes to creators, well, what if they say something? You know, there's so much. And then there's gaming. And everyone has an opinion on gaming. There's, there's all these different little touch points where we have um, opportunities to be cautious or frightened. So um, my best bit of advice for you uh, as a career um, thing is that you need to dominate that conversation or, or I don't like the word dominate, but you need to own um, how you feel. You need to present with confidence. You need to essentially uh, be the mother uh, and being able to say, it's okay. It's going to be okay because I know this is going to work X, Y, Z. Um, and be able to have that, that honest conversation. Do you know what? You might be frightened about this. However, these are the safeguards we have, blah, blah, blah. Um, for me, it's if, if you show that maybe you're not sure, um, you're going to feed it. You're going to feed that, that worry and it's going to be a whole thing. And then, and then it's really hard to, to go back from that. Um, if you have confidence, and you should have confidence in creators, you know, because they are the experts. They're so business savvy um, because it makes sense for them to not pay off brands. You know, like this is, this is a great, um, it's a great space. And if you can demonstrate that, then they will go with you. Uh, that's, that's my bit of advice. I don't know if anyone else might have something. I mean, I think also some of it comes with time. I think Frankie might yeah. be the best example here of someone who knows their worth. And when a brand approaches you, they know you're the expert. And I know sometimes it's a confidence thing of buying, you're approaching me because you want my community. So you should trust me on knowing how to speak to my community. I have built it. And if I could recommend speaking to Frankie, because Frankie definitely knows her worth. And when she works with brands, knows how much her community and her voice and her experience is worth. So definitely someone to grab some time with to learn that like one-to-one. -one. Sorry for signing you up. No, no, of course. That's why we're here. Thank you. It's very nice yeah. of you. And I think being a leader of your community is a very important thing. You know these yeah. people. You know what they want. They know how you you know, should be speaking to them. These brands don't understand your community. They're here to access your community. So being, you know... Even if you're not advocating for yourself, make sure that you know that you're advocating for your community. Because by being there, essentially, you are starting to monetize your relationship with them. And doing it in an authentic way is important for you as well. So just keep that in mind if you're feeling any kind of lack of self-confidence. That can help to bolster you, I think. Brilliant. Any other questions from the audience? Hey, I, <laughs> I can't see any hands, so I'm going to take that opportunity to wrap up. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. It's been wonderful to thank talk you so to much. you. And, and thank you, everyone here in the audience. Yay, thank yeah. you.